Um, welcome to class 11 and the MSA Servitization module, Ecosystems and Managing Code Delivery. Um, I've got an executive briefing there from Cambridge, which I think is worth downloading and reading, which is why I put it there as a bit of verbal. Um, I think it's a good approach to take um, in servitization, and it gives you many, many more opportunities which didn't previously exist. Today's objectives, to map out an ecosystem, you're going to do an electric car uh, warm-up session um, to try and map out what happens and see who's where and what they're doing. This allows us to identify the dominant actors in the ecosystem and all the other roles that they fulfill. I want to understand the role of partners in service co-delivery. Um, I'm using the term co-delivery there because it's not co-valley creation. It's actually doing the work together. And I want you to have tested out a process. So I want to then show you the process that I used. So this is in part three, service delivery for value capture ecosystems. Watch this video from Andy, really good. Um, so I've got to thank Andy for putting together such a cool video. Check what you already know by going through the case and then we'll share it. Andy's model, um, nine steps. Um, Sorry, more than nine steps. Um, really useful just to see those those headings. Look at the Smapley option, um, slightly different. Um, some benefits, um, some downsides. Um, also, when you're thinking about this, think about different models. Think about the extremes. Do it yourself. It's all self-serve. Do it for me. 100% done by somebody else and do it with me, somewhere in the middle. Um, think of the different options that we have today. Think about cars. I can buy one, I can rent one, I can have a taxi. Think how they all fit together. Keep an open mind, or create three completely different ones. But make sure that you know what the assumptions are in testing. Customers can perform some tasks very, very well. We forget that. It's actually a risk mitigation tool. Um, find ways to do it and remember that services are mostly delivered on the customer site so therefore we need to find a way to to manage that channels agents can help us using agents can really improve the experience for both the customer and the agent local firms can do that why do we have to do everything ourselves we can outsource it to a local firm makes a lot of sense if you're a Swiss exporter of products that has to provide some services. Why not get your local guys to provide the initial services? It's not just a cost issue. It's the fact that they'll be there quickly. They'll understand the culture. They'll have everything in their um, control. And they'll be able to come back to you when they need help. So now I'm going to move into a mapping process that gets you through to it. And I've got this picture here of Uber. And... Think about Uber as you're doing this. Uber is a relatively simple ecosystem, relative to many industrials, but it's quite complicated. Supply chains oversimplify the situation. And we've got to discover the interrelationships between actors in the ecosystem and describe the tools then that can help you understand the collaboration. That doesn't really exist anymore, does it? Supply chain going from where A to B. Um, it's a very complicated world, so we've got lots of other aspects coming in. Even if we look at it as a value network basis, it's still too narrow because we're kind of moving from command and control world, command of teams, to team of teams. Teams get on and do the job that needs to be done. Um, the world's too complicated for one person to manage it. And as we get down into the customer, even in the customer, we've got lots of machines, we've got lots of people, we've got lots of people asking lots of different questions. So we need a new approach. This is not really about simple stakeholder management, although part of it is kind of stakeholder-like. Deloitte produces great graphic, and it's in the Deloitte University Press. Really cool approach to it in terms of minimal viable, what are our capabilities to an ever-changing world. Um, we're moving outside the industrial silos. And we've got network systems, network complicated ecosystems, which creates lots of new opportunities. 
the ecosystem contains all of the capabilities I could ever, ever need to deliver a service. Very similar to natural world ecosystems. We have communities, we have habitats with ecosystems, we have seasons, we have devastation. Um, many, many similarities. So think how those two could match together. We've been doing this and we've been looking at different models. Um, and we've been getting different levels of complexity and seeing how we can do it in different times. We look at it as a map, visualize it so we can actually all see it. And when we can all see it, it means that we understand it together. Part of building it is part of the value. Working together, you get the value from it. The service dominant logic, we need to understand value in use. So we have every transaction now as a service. We also have to have the value in exchange. Um, every transaction has a value, otherwise get rid of it. SIPOC from Lean helps us map out the individual transactions, understands what's going on at a lower level. Stakeholder management helps us understand different actors. Ecology provides us some new words that we can use. Service design, service design thinking. Let's just describe what the actors are like and what's important for them. Okay, so we've looked at a bunch of use cases. Um, it works. We need to identify the roles of the actors. It's not the job titles, it's actually what they do. Then we have to map them out and link them together. And I think the most informative maps have 10 to 12 actors. Less than that, not enough, too many, you can't see anything. We've done this in a few hours to several weeks. It's very, very difficult on a very big, complicated organization. And we're looking for isolated pockets of data. So we can link them up and we can use them. Think of this as we're looking for providers and we're looking for consumers. This is our model. Um, overall value proposition, identify the actors, understand the actors, map the ecosystem, identify the, the value flows, and then create the current state map and then create a future state. Considering different layers. This gets rid of the, some of the silo thinking that we've been having. So have a mixed team when you do it. What the heck is the service meant to deliver? This is the end user customer and the value proposition that we should be delivering to them through the ecosystem. It takes time to develop. It may take you two, three, four, five attempts to actually get this written down and sketched out in a very simple way. Then identify the actors. Who's active? Now it's an iterative process. You won't get all the actors the first time you do it. Some of the actors are machines. Some of the actors are people. So think how to pull it all together. Every time you're looking at an actor and describing them, what's in it for me? We need to understand what's in it for me. Ecosystem, actor, oh, we've missed one, go back. It takes two or three iterations. Identify the motivation. What they like doing, what they not like doing, what makes them happy, what makes them sad. What are the inputs, what are the outputs? And how do they behave? We can then place them on the ecosystem and then link them together. These two phases are very similar to each other and you'll find that you put some of them in the wrong place. Left to right is the main flow. Up and down are constraints um, and other things that can get in the way of, of things working properly. So then we end up with a mess. We end up with this. Now we've got to understand really what's going on. We're looking for bottlenecks, we're looking for um, person that are lonely, we're looking for no closeout on, 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 on loops, um, we're looking at trying to take actors out and see whether it falls down. We're also trying to find out what are the critical ecosystem services that are there to keep the ecosystem healthy and working. We need to be able to zoom in and see where the problem areas are. We need to make sure there's a closeout. We need to make sure that um, the thank you and the money comes back. So we end up with today's map, we end up with a future map, we understand what people contribute to the system, we understand what makes them tick, um, we understand what skills and capabilities they've got or should have. We can identify redundancy in the system, we can check for robustness, we can find out how delicate it is, whether it's like glass or whether it's very, very um, robust like rubber. And we can model it as well. But the first thing is, is coming up with how it looks like. 
So what we're really doing here is changing the data into information. So we've got lots of hearsay and we're trying to put it all together so we can make sense of it. Kind in the way that uh, wicked problems, we get half the information and we try and join the gaps without that information. So this is really the process, a little bit more detail. It's also got the book chapter. Um, I'd recommend that you, you download the book um, and you use it, uh, read it. Closing. Mapped out an ecosystem, you can identify the dominant actors in the ecosystem. You've seen the possibilities now for co-delivering, co-creation. And you've seen a mapping process that you can apply. You now understand some of the basics of ecosystem thinking and ecosystem innovation. I'd recommend that you go and do this now yourself. Thanks. Em.